Listen, all I'm saying is this. I'm glad our Scarlet Knights pulled it out in the end because let me tell you, if they lose that game after blowing a 21-point third-quarter lead, they wouldn't be hearing the end of it on this show right now, Kaz. I promise you. Well, yeah, but they did win the game against a team that, barring last season, has been a better program for a decade. I personally was impressed with the fight that the team had under Professor Grabass. I think he'll have a Johnny Shepard playing some great ball later on in the season. We got to keep in mind that that was his first start, and he only threw like two college passes entering the season, Kevin. They beat Pitt, and it was his last second touchdown throw that did it. Listen, I get it, I do. But I can like the fact that they won and still be a little skeptical about some areas of this team. Rutgers has always been very defensive in the Big Ten. When they had Michigan and Ohio State both scared at halftime, it was because of their, go ahead, say it, defense. To be honest, I was impressed with their defense in this game. They forced the freshman quarterback Holstein to throw two picks. Aaron Lewis gets a sack. Zylan Williams took one of those picks to the house. The defense killed it. I agree with you wholeheartedly. My takeaway here is that Shepard needs to improve week to week. He missed nine passes and four of them were interceptions. Two of them were yik sixes to DeCasa, and another one led to an easy field goal for Pitt. But again, it's going to take some time for this offense to gel under a new coach. I really like Shepard's potential, but I still say this team is going to live or die by Kyle Monongai, and I just hope that workload isn't too much for him throughout the season. Also, still think this team should have let Kalamanaknis start the season. You know what? With Menangai's 139 yards on the ground and 66 in the receiving game, I'm slightly concerned about finding that other guy. They put a lot of offense on his shoulders with Shepard struggling slightly, but if they can get Shepard going and spreading the ball, this offense will be better as a whole. Now, you could make the argument that Kalik Manis would have been doing this, but I understand rolling with the mobile QB who can do all that you want in this offense, but only time will tell. <laughs> right you are, my friend. Well, they get a chance to silence any negativity this week facing a really bad Akron team. If they don't blow them out, though, I promise you my skepticism, it will be back. Oh, Kevin, you're always a skeptic. I'm going to go Rutgers winning 27-3 with Shepard finding himself with two touchdowns and no interceptions. <laughs> Bold move, Kaz. Bold move. Give me the Scarlet Knights 31-17. I just do not see a blowout. That's it for us. Thanks for tuning into the Man Cave featuring Kaz and Kevin on Fox Sports WCTC, 1450 AM, New Brunswick. Well, you heard the boys from the Man Cave. It is time to get down to the field and finally see this Rutgers Scarlet Knights team try to right the ship it feels weird to say that after a win against pittsburgh but they did have a lot of negatives late in that game starting it so well but then it just started to go downhill luckily they were able to pull out that last second literally last second victory and today we get to see them here at she stadium as ruckers will start with the football and a johnny shepherd will find kyle Manangai out of the backfield as he has done so well this season now Shepard on first and 10, faking it to both Manangai and the receiver out wide, rolling to his right and finding a man downfield for a huge first down. Now that's a big play that we have not seen Shepard make with his arm very often here, running the football, easy touchdown for Kyle Manangai. And that's how Rutgers get started. You heard the boys on the man cave. They're expecting a win big here. And if they don't get it, I mean, Mr. Kevin, he might be a skeptic. He has been thus far. We'll see if they can keep him at bay. Third and five and a Johnny Shepard running, taking off. And he needs to slow down on taking them hits, unfortunately. He takes another one as he gets the pass off. And that one is complete for a close to a first down. But... Balls on the table, they go for it on fourth and three, and that is a huge play going for a first down and more. Rutgers on a second and eight. Here's a jet sweep, and this one going to Chris Long into the end zone. Walk-in touchdown, Scarlet Knights. And they lead the game 14-zip. As we go into this second quarter, you can see the passing, the rushing, the offense just humming so far in this ball game. The defense quietly doing its job as well. There's a big hit 
to force a fourth down and get the ball back in the hands of Shepard, who takes off with his legs again. But again, scary, just taking too many hits and losing a lineman here too. Gus Zalanskis going down and coming out of the ball game, but it's okay. Second and eight. A Johnny Shepard rolling to his right again, looking to throw, finds a man downfield for a huge first down yet again. Now play fake on a third and eight. Akron defense actually helping them out a little bit here. Shepard scrambling, leaving a fourth and inches. Rucker's going to go for it. No balls about it. There goes Manungai up the middle. If you can't stop it, then just keep running it down their throats if they can't stop it. Here's a Johnny Shepard rolling to his right, finding a man wide open. It's Chris Long. He's had a big day. That's his second touchdown of the ball game. He's got the one on the jet sweep, which I guess counts as a pass. And that one right there. So two receiving TDs for Long, making it 21 zip. Here's a Johnny Shepard rolling to his right, finding a man. It's Christian Dremel. He's a slippery sucker. He finds his way into plus territory. Rutgers with the football inside the 35. Shepard, he's been hot so far. Looking to throw, hit as he throws, but still finds the tight end, Kanopka, for a huge first down. Second and goal, why not? Kyle Manungai, and you knew it. He was going to plow his way into that end zone regardless. Touchdown, Manungai, and Rutgers with a huge 28-0 halftime lead this is huge this is what the boys on the show wanted to see and Rutgers coming out and dominating an inferior opponent here's a throw up the middle that one complete first first down of the day for Akron and the second one comes right after that on a third and four third and eight with 333 to go in the third quarter deep throw down field and look at that watching Waiting, commiserating, any Blake 182 fans out there? Big first down for Rutgers after the interception. It's Kyle Manungai picking up an easy second and in inches. Third and 10, though, as the Akron defense trying to get a little stiff here. And look at the run by a Johnny Shepard to pick up the first. That'll get it to Kyle Manungai's hands on first and 10, plowing through the defense. But Akron does do a good enough job stiffening up and forcing a Rutgers field goal attempt, which Jai Patel puts through the uprights as Rutgers takes that bigger 31-zip lead. The question here is, will they finish this ball game with a shutout? There's another first down as Akron starting to get acclimated here to Picking up a couple of first downs against this defense. A deep pass, which is caught there by an Akron wide receiver. And then a throw left side, and there's another interception. Wow, that is huge, as that one will get it back in the hands of Rutgers and back in the hands of a Johnny Shepard returning after the third quarter break. As you can see, just dominating in all facets of this football game, including time of possession. Nothing doing, though, on that possession, and Akron gets the football back, and on a huge third and seven, it's a big play to the right-hand side for Akron. Now third and eight. Big throw, and again, that one could have been another safety interception, but unfortunately for Rutgers, unfortunately for Akron, it's just incomplete. There's another incompletion as that one hit the hands of the receiver. So turnover on downs, ball back in the hands of Rutgers, and they're still throwing the football because, well, I don't know. Why not, I guess? There's a first down for Rutgers, and with 3.20 to go in the football game, starting a little option game are the Scarlet Knights. A first down for a Johnny Shepard drive stalls. Jai Patel gets another opportunity and he will nail another field goal as Rutgers taking that 37, 34 to nothing lead later on as time is ticking away. Not really trying to run up the score here, but it's fourth down and Rutgers takes another easy field goal for Jai Patel and they do finish the game with the shutout. 37 nothing coach Professor Grabass very happy about this win and he's looking to build off of it a johnny shepherd with a great performance he gets player of the game 68.2 percent of his passes get completed you can see the running game again a big factor 32 runs for 150 and two touchdowns as a team 
passing yardage actually was won by Akron as they started to actually let loose at the end of the ball game. But the turnover differential, a plus three for Rutgers and the time of possession over double in this 37 nothing win. So as you can see, Aaron Lewis, again, another sack for him defensively. Flip Dixon picking up an interception. Chris Long with his two TDs. Manungai with two TDs. And a Johnny Shepard throwing for two and running for 77 yards. Great performance as Rutgers able to commit a quarterback. Potentially the starter post a Johnny Shepard. We'll have to see more on that. Professor Grabass looking to improve himself, and there are a lot of choices, as 30 coins here is a lot to spend. But probably looking for new running backs in the future, as Kyle Manangai will be gone at the end of the season, a senior. Maybe looking for some new wide receivers who can get the job done. Again, there's a lot of seniors on this roster and there's going to be a lot of turnover so there's going to have to be an even spread in recruiting here trying to find the young freshman we take a look at josh best and josh best is ready for his hard sell we have all three of his big time pitches and we are going to go ahead and put that into hometown hero schedule his visit that's a little tough because of course he has a competitive visit uh, in wisconsin as another wide receiver is coming in there so we will go ahead and schedule him for the washington game which is going to be a tough one i mean ranked washington is not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination we will also go ahead and schedule the visit for right end gene lennon as we try to bring in some more defensive talent as well so gene lennon schedules his visit we have dylan jennings who is one of my top targets out of ramsey new jersey we really would like to bring him in um, but that one's not going to be easy uh, by any stretch of the imagination. He's a very highly sought after recruit and there's going to be a lot of competition for him. So we're going to try to hard sell as soon as possible. Got to take a little bit of a guess here. We only have the proximity to home and program tradition. One of them it cannot be. So it's going to have to be hometown hero. We're going to go ahead and slide that through. Try to get Dylan Jennings. So we'll see. All right. Geisinger is another one. As we went ahead and advanced through a bye week, Geisinger would be a really nice tight end to have to replace Kanopka and potentially even replace some other tight ends who had been originally recruited at Rutgers that may not fit what we want to do here. He's unfortunately for me a blocking tight end, and I really did want to get more of a pass catcher, but if he's readily willing to come to Rutgers, who are we to say no to Joel Geisinger? So we're going to go ahead and try to hard sell him, despite the fact that we only have two of his three main pitches. But we're going to try to guess on which one. We'll go with Grassroots. We also would like to get Audrey Hepburn's son, Paul Hepburn. I'm kidding. But Paul Hepburn out of Princeton, New Jersey. Uh, we're going to try to go ahead and guess that it's TV time. We're also going to try to schedule his visit. He's got a nice complimentary visit for Washington, so we'll bring him in right away, as I believe Washington is our next game. So it's going to get exciting. We got a couple of guys already coming to the Washington game, and it's, it's going to get interesting, that's for sure. Ronnie Yoder, another guy we would like to bring in. And uh, we're going to schedule his visit as well for a proximity to home. All right, I was mistaken. Washington is not our next game. We are playing Virginia Tech on the road. Enter Sandman. Of course, not in the game. But still, Enter Sandman is rocking in the stadium. And the Hokies are ready to play. Hokies lost to Rutgers last season, if you remember, in real life, and they're going to be a little upset here. Rutgers coming into this game ready to play against Virginia Tech. This is going to be fun. It's going to be a heck of a matchup 
And, of course, Rutgers coming in at 2-0 and oh to start the season, and they start with a run to Kyle Manungai that goes absolutely nowhere. Then a play fake, and right away, a Johnny Shepard's got to get away from the pass rush, and he takes off down the right sideline. Brilliant run, pushed out of bounds. Big first down. Manungai on a toss, looking for room to cut up, and he does cut up for a nice gain of six. Then a play fake for a Johnny Shepard, looking and finding the tight end Dom Tuck for a huge first down. As Rutgers opening up just the way they want to until the screen can't get set up and a Johnny Shepard is sacked. Then they go with the reverse, and this one's going to go for a nice big gain of eight yards. Third and eight is left over, and a Johnny Shepard after the play fake doesn't know which direction he wants to roll to. He's rolling and throwing, and that's actually caught, but there's a flag on the field. We'll see what it is. It is a roughing the passer call, so a little bit of help to Rutgers here as the Virginia Tech big-time defensive tackle Peebles is called for the rough. There's a three-yard run on first down, and then Menangai picking up nothing on second down. Absolutely nothing. So third and seven. It's on a Johnny Shepard's shoulder again, and this time he makes an ill-advised decision. Intercepted, and Virginia Tech will take over with the football. First and ten, throwing and complete for a first down. Tyron Drones, one of the better QBs in the ACC, and uh, we'll see what he can do today against this Rutgers defense. And so far, the, Ruck the Virginia Tech offense is humming. A couple of nice runs, though, so far. Not seeing a lot from Drones. There's a nice pass. That one going to the running back out of the backfield. Big play. First and 10. Nice handoff there to the spellback. That'll go for a gain of five. Here's Drones and throwing the wide receiver screen, making moves and picking up a first down. Virginia Tech offense is rolling for their first performance. That one knocked loose with a big hit. And that'll bring fourth, second, and ten, where Drones gets it down inside the five. First and goal, they're going to run the football, and there's an easy touchdown for Virginia Tech. We're used to seeing Kyle Manungai doing that, but unfortunately we see Toten doing it. Another New Jersey man, by the way as Toten gets into the end zone for Virginia Tech and makes it 7-zip at the end of one. And as you can see, Virginia Tech out gaining Rutgers, and they've had it for one and a half possessions. So, so far not working very well for Rutgers, but here out of the backfield, it's Kyle Manungai, and he goes for a gain of five out of the backfield. Now second and five, Shepard left side, that one complete to Kanopka. It'll be a third and one, and Manungai looked like he was dead to rights when he received that football, but he picked up the first. And now going the other way, Dimir Miller with a big first down run. So first and ten, and the option keeper, and nice pitch by Shepard. Getting it to Manungai, picked up probably a couple extra yards than they would have had. Second and two, Shepard going to keep it himself and run straight out of bounds. Again, getting smart with the football here. He's getting better as the season goes on. There's a throw and incompletion headed for Samuel Brown, the fifth. Then a play fake to Manangai. Shepard rolling. He's got nobody to get the football to. He just wings it out of bounds. Now third and 11, another play fake. Nice chop there by Manungai to get Shepard some time, but he's got nobody open and he will just get hit out of bounds. So it'll be a Jai Patel field goal try up and just sneaks it in to get Rutgers their first points of the football game. Seven to three. Tyron Drone still trying to move this offense. It's a lot of draw plays here. Rutgers not ready for these and Toten just keeps it moving here on the ground. They've got a two-back system, and it doesn't work for a first down there, so Rutgers ends up receiving a punt. Here's Christian Dremel trying to make a move, but the five-foot-nine receiver is brought down. But it's still a first down here out of the little flats play. It goes Kanapka, big first down. Uh, second and six, and there goes a Johnny Shepard to the left side, picking up that first down. Shepard with the play fake gets it out of his hands quickly as the rush was coming, but it does not go for a completion. 
Here's Shepard rolling to his right. He's got a man wide open, and that is complete to Kyle Manungai. First down, Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Time rolling down here in this first half. Manungai with a cut up the middle, and he is dragged for seven yards. Second and three, Shepard gets it away before he can be hit, and that's caught by Dimir Miller. First down. First and 10, Manungai going right side, and this is a huge run for a first and goal. 38 seconds to go in the half. Samuel Brown, the fifth, trying to get there. He is stuffed. Second and goal, and Shepard takes it himself. Easy touchdown, Scarlet Knights, as they take the 10-7 lead. Nearing that halftime break. So what do the Man Cave guys have to say now? I will wonder what they will say on the show this week as tough battle here with Virginia Tech. Rutgers playing tough battles at very least with everyone as that is it for the first half. We head to the tunnel. Rutgers out gaining Virginia Tech in the running game, but a lot more attempts to do so. Here is a 10 Seven lead at half. You got to be happy with that if you're a Scarlet Knights fan. But Virginia Tech opens up this second half with a huge run. And now it seems like Toten no longer the main rushing focus. You can see they go with that two-back system. You never know who's going to be out there. And that's a huge drop for Virginia Tech. Getting the football back in the hands of the Scarlet Knights and Kyle Manungai making it a long, long day if that keeps happening. There's a Johnny Shepard with the slide and the first down. Now going left side, Dimir Miller, and he gets near midfield. Here is Manungai to take it into plus territory and make it a third and one, and why not give it right back to him with the expectation, of course, of him picking it up. And Virginia Tech losing Keller on that play with an injury. Look at this, a Johnny Shepard with the keeper just goes up the middle for a gain of eight. And now Dremel right side on the jet sweep and Dremel down the sideline for the touchdown and Rutgers taking the bigger lead here in this third quarter. Dremel shooting his arrows, it is 17-7. With 2.13 to go in the third, big broken tackle right there, and he'll end up picking up two yards where he probably should have lost like three or four. Big throw, and the diving attempt is no good, which is going to lead to a huge touchdown pass. The blown coverage, the over-aggressiveness by the Scarlet Knight defense allowed that to be wide open for Jennings. Ali Jennings with a huge TD. So back to a three-point lead for Rutgers. Manungai up the middle, and then this Dremel jet sweep. He has been doing a great job on those today. A Johnny Shepard trying to get away, but the rush will get to him. Huge sack for Virginia Tech. Gets them the football back, but then immediately, Kyron Drones with a pick. Not something we thought we would see today. He's... Normally a very tough quarterback in this conference, this ACC conference of his. But a big sack on Shepard to make it second and 19, and then a huge hit as he throws. Man in his face and attempting the jet sweep to Dimir Miller. Not going to work. So Virginia Tech gets this football back. Going screen out left for a gain of one. Then rushing the football. Nice cutback. The vision to be able to do that. Huge. As you can see, a little comparison here. Dremel versus Ali Jennings. They have been the driving forces of their passing offenses. And there's another rush for three yards for VT. Now going with the screen play. That'll get him to third and manageable at just third and four. Another screen play on the other side, and that's a first down pickup for the Hokies. Now running the football, bouncing off of would-be tacklers. This man has been insane. And all that to lose two yards, actually. And now giving him the football again, and this time gaining five to make it third and seven. Why not? Different running back this time. I think Toten got hurt the ball game. I haven't seen him in a long time. That leads to a Virginia Tech field goal. Love hits the field goal. 
And we're tied at 17 with just 3.28 to go in the football game. There goes Manangai out in the flats and picking up a first down after the catch. He's a dangerous player, that's for sure. There goes Shepard, and Shepard picking up six on the scramble. Second and four. Looking to go for the screen, but he just never lets the ball go. He gets hit from behind, and now a third and nine. Shepard rolling, and into the ground the ball goes. Another injury on the play. Didn't see who that was, but... Quick pass for a gain of a yard for Drones. Now another RPO. That one goes for a first down, but a flag down. And we got to see who this one's on. It's a legal man downfield, of course. And it will go against Parker Clements. Got a little too far downfield there. So a second and 14 and a big pickup of 12 to set up a third and two. Could be an easy pickup or it could be a stuffing. Look at that. Ooh, is it Thanksgiving already? Samuel Brown, the fifth, running for a gain of three. Just 137 to go in regulation. Brown will get it again. Fans wondering where Manungai was there, but it's okay because Chris Long picking up the first down on the screenplay. Now a Johnny Shepard looking to get away from the defenders, and he finds his way for a gain of eight yards, but that sets up second and two, and Dremel finds a way to get away from the defense and pick up the first down. Another injury here, Antoine powell Ryland for Virginia Tech, injured on the play. Shepard trying to get through the line and unfortunately knocked down for a loss of three. Shepard to the left side, it's a beautiful throw to Dimir Miller for a first down. Now play fake, see if Shepard can stay hot. He doesn't look for the deep throw I thought he was gonna go for it. He fumbles the football back into the hands of the Hokies and we are going to overtime. Here we go, o o OT number one, Malachi Thomas injured on the play so you won't see him now. Instead, in comes Mo Toten. He is back in the ball game. There he goes for a first down. Now Toten against his Jersey brethren, picking up a gain of four. They'll give it to him again, and this time he is stuffed. Third and four now. This is where Rutgers has got to get the stop. Kyron Drones takes it himself, and that is what separates the men from the boys. Virginia Tech needed a play and they called upon Kyron Drones to take care of it himself, and he did it. Now going with the jet sweep, it's Dremel. Dremel trying to make a man miss, but he is brought down barely after a gain of three. Here goes Shepard trying to take it himself. He'll pitch it out to Manungai. Virginia Tech all over these little trickery plays. Third and five. Shepard can't get the flip out, and it'll be fourth and nine. This is huge. Rutgers has to pick it up. The throw, it's intercepted. He was going for tight end Kanapka, and it just was not there. Virginia Tech is going to pull off the overtime win. Ali Jennings, your player of the game. Three catches, 105, and a touchdown. Rutgers with 317 yards of offense, but no win to show for it. 40% third downs to 33 of Virginia Tech, but no wins to show for it. Unbelievable, 13 minutes of possession time, over double the possession time of Virginia Tech, but no win to show for it. A Johnny Shepard, two interceptions and the fumble lost. That's huge, but he does make a lot of huge plays for this team from time to time. Manungai with over 100 yards of total offense. If there's any good news, it's that Ryan Whiney, the running back, has committed out of Camden, New Jersey. Bryce Tam out of Metuchen, New Jersey, has committed at wide receiver. So a couple of potential future playmakers for this Rutgers team have committed to the program. Ronnie Yoder, we are looking for his proper hard sell now, and it appears that it could be aspirational, so we will give that a try. 
The next football game that you will see in She Stadium will be number 15, Washington Huskies coming into town to take on our Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And this is a 4-0, 15th ranked team, and it it doesn't look great after an overtime loss to Virginia Tech after having beaten Virginia Tech last season. So not looking great for Rutgers here. We'll see what the guys have to say about it at the beginning of next episode. Thank you all, and thank you to Man Cave and Kaz for their help on these projects.